Right. Take the side panels off. Okay. So we've got this. Ah, uh, yes. And we've got this one out. Yes. And do this. This button will unlock the graphics card. Out we come. Okay, there we go. That's the old one. Moves to the M. This isn't supported right now, so let's just slide that forward. And then the trouble is that's now going to foul this fan. So we have to move this, I think. And there's no screw hole that can go there. Can go there. I, all three of these positions mess up with this fan. This self-adhesive sticky pad, I've just moved it back a bit. So it was at the end and now it's back here. So I'm hoping we can now put this in. There we go. That's okay. Is that complete the end? Well, I hope so. I think that's okay. This just arrived. This is uh, 80 gigabits per second Visa certified DisplayPort 2.1 cable for which is two meters long, as recommended by Monitors Unboxed, because the cables you get with monitors for DisplayPort 2.1 are too short. Now it's the moment of truth. Turning it on. Spinning. 
So far so good. Well, I had to install the drivers to get this to work because it was saying Microsoft Basic Display Adapter. But it's working. I have 176 ROPs. One of the first things I did was run some 3D Mark benchmarks just to see how things were working. Not too loud, not too hot. And um, in the end, I got some results up to 118% faster, which sounds a bit too good to be true, but it's just a synthetic benchmark. And then I tried uh, Cyberpunk, so I'm just using DLSS quality and I've turned off some of the, I've turned ray tracing and path tracing on and I've turned off some of the stuff like depth of field and motion blur. Everything else is on maximum. And yep, so this is on the 4080 Super. And I get about 29 to 40 FPS. This is at 4K in this scene. And I'm riding around on the motorbike. It's more like 30 frames per second. It's so not ideal. It looks very pretty, yeah, it's very but more frames, frames per second. second. Yeah. Normally I would turn the graphics down. We use a 1440p monitor if I was using this card. But then with a 5090, it's much more playable, 62 to 82 in this scene. And yeah, just looking a bit nice and smooth. It's, you know, if you want higher frame rates, you can just turn settings down. But I, in this game, I don't think you need super high frame rates, but it's nice to have decent frame rates and nice to have all the settings cranked up because it looks really pretty. Riding around on the motorbike is a lot easier. Get a few more frames per second. Really like these reflections there. This is why it's nice to turn the settings up in this game. More cool reflections. Yeah, this is really nice. Decent frame rate for this kind of a scene. Then I'm looking at Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Um, 4K, DLSS Super, and then high end for the flat screen. And I get about 74. So everything's fine really on a 4080. If you're just doing you know, 82 frames per second is nice, I'm sure, in this game on a monitor, but I want to do things in VR, so... Yeah, nothing to complain about here. And then in the 5090, see there's not that much difference now. I think probably it's more CPU bound. But then in this scene, we're getting sometimes over 100 frames per second. Again, this is in the high end settings still. Um, I couldn't actually run Ultra on my 4080 Super. It would run out of memory sometimes and all the game would crash. So I'll try Ultra a bit later on. So then in VR, typically on the 4080, what I would do is have everything on medium and then quality. And normally I would turn on the dynamic settings so it would sort of scale down the graphics a bit if frames got too low, um, but I've turned this off for this test just to keep things a bit more even. 
Here we are in the 4090, yep, 35 to 38. I don't know why the frame rate's a bit lower here than it is over the city. Um, but yeah, this isn't great. Um, oh, the dynamic foveated rendering is on, which is helping a bit, I'd imagine. Um, I don't know. It's not great. It, you certainly notice the lack of smoothness below 45 frames per second. This is in a Pimax crystal, by the way. So this looks okay, but this is medium settings. Um, other locations are a bit better. I'd get higher frame rates in more normal locations. New York is a bit of a stress test. And now with the 5090, it's just much easier at 65. So as a percentage, it's not a gigantic improvement. It's not double. But as soon as you're over 45, everything just looks really nice and smooth. So that really helps. And I've got some headroom because I'm in medium settings still. Cockpit and frame rates did vary a little bit, nice. but I think it's just the way this game is. It really depends which direction you're looking, how high you are, and there's a few stutters just due to things loading in, it would seem. It, it did clear up after a while. So then I thought, well, I'll turn the settings up because you know, let's make things look nicer seeing as I've got a new graphics card. So I just changed it to high end and left everything else the same. There's probably a lot more tweaking could be done. Yeah, and I'm getting 55 now. I'm not quite sure why the box has gone red. Maybe that means we're hitting some CPU limit or something. I'm not totally sure. I'll have to figure it out. But it looks fine in the headset. It looks fine. And 55 again is enough to look really smooth. So then I thought, well, let's turn it up to ultra. And even in Ultra, we're more or less almost always hitting 45. So if I wasn't in New York, I think Ultra would be fine. I'm not sure I can really see much difference with Ultra in VR. And then I just thought I'd try Ultra in the flat as well. And again, it's just not even really trying. It's 90 frames per second. It's You can just turn everything up maximum all the time if you're not doing VR. But I'm not totally sure I'm really seeing much difference between high-end and ultra so and there may be others there's probably certain settings that have more effect than others so there's probably room to play around see some guys VR flight sim guy has probably done a guide I'll have to follow it at some point so one other interesting thing I'm finding with this case is because it has holes on the side it's effectively an open air case. The big giant fans are sucking air in. I can feel warm air blowing out the back. But unusually, I can feel warm air blowing out the side because the GPU exhausts air out the side and it just comes straight out of the case which I think is really helping. So that's nice. So you can see the CPU temperature inside the case is 63. 